Um, there's a promo. This is? I'll say your name. Your promo? Say the name for the promo. I think we should say our names. Oh, Harland Williams? Howie Mandel. And we have a new podcast called When a Stranger Calls, where we take calls from strangers, and then that's all we can say. We don't know who's going to call and what's going to happen. We don't really know what, even what they look like. Right, but why would, like, why would people want to click on it and subscribe and watch? I think because people know that we have a lot of wisdom. We have what we call old souls. That's, you really think people are going to click on it because they want to see old souls? Well, ask me any advice. Let me give you an example. How can we get more people to subscribe and watch when a stranger calls? Send for safety flares into the sky so people know. Do we have a safety flare? Do we have any safety flares? Hello? Hello? Oh my God, hello? What happened now? You got kicked out of your Instagram. And I got kicked off of Instagram. <laughs> banned. I was banned from my own Instagram. Do you know right. I can never log in whenever I'm wearing makeup because it doesn't recognize me? Girl, no, that's what I was going to say. That's why I've never done it on my phone is I'm like, this phone is not going to get me in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be locked out for sure. Really? I think so, right? Are you ready to start this? I am. Okay. <laughs> Sunny, listen to this. This is for you. Get your groove on right now. Watching how we men do. Check, check it out, it's a girl next door, Holly Madison, the one we adore. From a beautiful bunny and golden locks, to a playboy murders and a podcast talks. Catch her in the kitchen with a tasty recipe, so next to baby girl we're living in a Christmas tree. Peep shows, true crime, bringing us a greatness, is she a real life, a Disney a princess? Don't stop. Welcome to Howie Mandel Does Don't Stuff. Stop. I'm Howie Mandel. I am Jacqueline Schultz, Jacqueline his daughter. Schultz. And Holly Madison is here today. Woo! Holly Madison, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. And I have to say that theme song is like the greatest moment of my life. It was so <laughs> really? good. I didn't know I was going to get such a cute theme song. And they even got like the baby Yoda in the Christmas tree. Everything. <laughs> they did their research. That was That's so good. That's Sunny in the Black Pack. Sunny in the Black Pack. You guys are amazing. <laughs> they do such great stuff. They, they really do, do research so that we don't have to. <laughs> it's so good. Yeah, that it's the most. That, re- that made me so happy. Such a good I'm movie. glad that I'm making you happy. I <laughs> yes, know right. that right now you're having a, a, a little bit of a, a difficult time. I, I know wearing <laughs> headsets, and it's not. I'm not. I'm not making fun of you. I think that I, I understand it, and you've been. Um, and I'm an advocate also for mental health uh-huh. and neurodiversity. And I know that you uh, just recently got diagnosed uh, with uh, being on the spectrum with autism. Yeah. And, and and wearing headsets is a tough thing for you. I wouldn't say really tough. I just worry about like, am I staying present? Am I getting distracted or whatever? But I, I think I'm gonna hang in there. As long as you're wearing the headset, listening <laughs> yes. to this show, yes. you shouldn't get distracted. Yeah. But if you're tuned into something else on your headset, I find that distracting. Yeah. Or if I was hearing some weird echo or something, but this is good. Well, Sunny talks with an echo. It's yes, okay. I do. Listen, listen. I actually really like that. You that know, that's his cool. voice. That has cool. nothing to do with the microphone. <laughs> that's his voice. <laughs> that would be amazing. It is. You would rule the world if that was your voice. I love it. He's got a great voice, doesn't <laughs> yeah, he? Yeah, yes. So how have you been, young Really lady? good. You've been really good? Yeah, really good. Family good? Everybody's good. Yeah, I have an 11-year-old daughter and a 7-year-old son, and they're so good. They're in surf camp right now, and we're living summer, so. Are you living, are you a single mom? Or are you living? No, in, I'm divorced, but I, I have joint custody and um, everything's good. I get along with their dad and. Okay. Yeah. We're and like, are you dating? Um, not right now. No. Okay. <laughs> Is that a, I'm, not, I'm not being too forward. I no, just not at all. Fair question. I, I would imagine that you have to fend off a fair amount of. Maybe a little. I'm pretty busy, though. I think that's what keeps me away. From busy me. doing the the show. Are you doing the crime show now? Is it? Yeah, I do um, two true crime shows. Lethally on Blonde. Investigation Discovery. Yeah, Lethally Blonde and the Playboy Murders. And we're getting ready. We're researching some new cases now to possibly feature. So, are you actually solving cases? Like I know that some of the cases that I saw on the show mm-hmm. were not solved. 
Yeah, we don't try to solve the cases, but I feel like sharing these stories and getting them out there, the unsolved ones, if that could help anybody come forward with any information and help get some closure for people, that would be amazing. I, I think that's every true crime producer's dream. Like we don't actively go out and try and solve it, but I hope with, with sharing the stories that can contribute a little bit. That's happened a lot in the true crime space where they've had podcasts that feature different stories and then they go back and reopen cases or um, turn over um, evidence like, yeah, and stuff like that. And they've been able to solve cases before because of this true crime because it airs Podcast. and yeah. then people say, oh, I remember that or I was mm -hmm. there that day. And then exactly. you, you end up being, uh, that was like, uh, there was a murder. Or turnover convictions. That's what I was trying to look for, though, that word. They've turned no, over I think convictions evidence. before. I think you were looking for the No, I wasn't. <laughs> I think she was looking for evidence. I don't think she's, she just doesn't want to ever give me the satisfaction of being it. right. She's in the other room. This has nothing to do with you. Uh, she's more of a germaphobe than I am. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. And I'm just, I, I, I'm, and I want to be honest with you, I got over, I'm over something, uh -huh. but I'm over it. Yeah. I'm not sick. Okay, so but she's I, giving you like an incubation period. But mentally, I'm not over it. Okay, that is 100% <laughs> fair. I love that. But yeah, you're 100% right about sometimes the true crime content can help, you know, more information come forward. We actually had one of our cases that we discussed in the first season of the Playboy Murders, um, a woman named Star Stowe. She was murdered in Florida and they reopened her case because of the show. So hopefully some new information comes Remember out. when, like, I think even from an episode of, uh, an episode of Seinfeld, do you know that they solved a, a murder? Stop it right now. Tell me that story. I have not heard that. Oh, that's crazy. They or have a documentary. Curbed? It was curved. It was curbed. Um, it was curved. Oh, at the Dodger game. Yes. Yeah. No, that is so crazy. That is the craziest thing I've ever heard. For those who don't know, there was an episode of Curb Your Enthusiasm that they shot at a Dodgers game and they were able to catch somebody on camera. They said instead of being uh, the, uh, he had to have an alibi that he was mm -hmm. someplace else when they knew the timeline of the murder and they have this guy was sitting behind the scene the whole time and they know when it was being shot and it's mm -hmm. all there. So the guy got off the murder charge by being at a, a Dodger game, which was recorded for Curb Your Enthusiasm. Yeah, that is incredible. And it became a, do it's a documentary. Yeah. Yeah. I remember seeing that. That's such a crazy story. Are you happy? Me? Yeah. Yeah. Do I look happy? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, that wasn't I, a question I wasn't asking about now, just in general. I, yeah. I feel like, you know, um, you, you, you got diagnosed, so you were looking mm -hmm. for an answer yeah. to why, you know, mm -hmm. certain things or decisions were made in life or how you were reacting to things. And I'm just wondering, you've been through a lot. And, and uh, I think that uh, we all look for happiness mm -hmm. or contentment. And, uh, you know, I'm always reading about, like I was just reading recently when I was looking you up, that one of the girls, I don't think she was a playmate or mm -hmm. uh, th there's a girl now that there's a lawsuit right now. I think it was just in TMZ. Yes, she filed a lawsuit against A&E because on Secrets of Playboy, they used footage of her as, um, dancing just wearing paint correct is that the case? yeah the green yeah, paint girl yeah i just heard about that yeah i just saw that uh video mm -hmm. yeah it's, it's again today yeah it's really interesting for the sixth time <laughs> yeah. yeah when i was watching because i do research yeah, yeah. <laughs> when i was watching secrets of playboy season two you know they were showing some old issues of the magazine as reference to what they were talking about which completely makes sense but i was surprised because they did so little blurring that you're basically seeing this entire nude photo with maybe like a little bit of a nipple blurred out and I'm like is that really you know you're talking to women who maybe had a bad experience or maybe aren't so thrilled with that decision they made some are some aren't and I don't know if running the picture without a heavier sensor is really the most tasteful thing to do so but when I'm I guess my question was like that woman mm -hmm. I mean if you had to do it all again Oh, that's such a tricky question because I feel like if I had to go relive it again, I probably wouldn't, but I wouldn't go back and like nitpick and like change things about my life because I feel like everybody has some sort of a struggle in life or some sort of thing they have to learn from. And that was mine. And it led me to where I am today. And I at least have an interesting story because of it. So I, de I definitely wouldn't go back and change anything. But if you're saying you have to go back in time and your consciousness is put back in your old body and you have to redo it, I would probably find some other, other thing to do maybe because- Is it good to be a playmate? I think in general, yeah. I think a lot of people have a really great experience. I think just for me, I got in way over my head. I was there at the wrong time. I had to deal with a lot of things I wasn't ready for, you know? 
because it was a, you know, it was a personal relationship for me as well. It wasn't like I just posed for the magazine and then moved on with my life. No, I know we had, uh, yeah. I have a friend, Tim Bagley. I don't know if mm -hmm. you know who Tim Bagley is. He's a very funny actor. He's done uh, an episode of this podcast, but he was a butler. Probably oh, before you got there. I'm oh, talking about so cool. in the 70s or oh, 80s. Wow, yeah. Yeah, and he, there he is. Uh, I bet he has some crazy stories. He, he does. does. Oh my God. <laughs> he should come on my podcast if he's willing to share. He does. He shares. Oh my he God. shares. I'm hitting him up. Okay, he'll, he'll come on, but the crazy, crazy And he story. drops names too. Whoa, yeah, because yeah. the 70s were nuts. 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 But but it's kind of like, and I'm not condoning any of that behavior, mm -hmm. but because of, you know, when you hear those stories, if they happened today, people would be in jail. Yeah, it's a lot of crazy stuff happened. You know, and, yeah. I, and I heard you on another, on another, you know, uh, I don't know if it was a podcast or an interview or wh whatever you were doing, just saying like, even the the whole milieu around the place, right? Mm -hmm. There was trays in every room and even on the <laughs> tennis court. Oh my God, the trays were so funny. They cracked me up. I didn't understand it at first because you go you in there. You didn't understand it. Well, here's, here's the part I didn't understand and was only recently educated on. So there are these trays everywhere and on the most random places. Like, yeah, they were in the bathroom. Yeah, they were out by the pool, but they were also like on the tennis court. And they had like Kleenex and like every kind of like makeshift lube you could ever want, which like I understood that part. There was like Vaseline and baby oil oil and all this stuff but the thing 30 I, love <laughs> but the thing <laughs> the thing I never got was also there was a bottle of Pepto-Bismol on every tray and I was like what does that have to do with anything is this like for hangovers what is this and I've been talking about it just because I, th I thought those trays were so silly and everybody's like Holly it's because people were doing coke and that gives you the runs I didn't know that yeah I mean cocaine use as far as I saw wasn't like particularly rampant when I was there but maybe that's a throwback to the 70s or 80s I don't wait know. so you do coke you do a line of coke and then take Pepto-Bismol well I I've never done I didn't it. know that I've never done that but people were saying that like it makes you have diarrhea does coke make you have diarrhea does, does can anybody we take a know call? <laughs> I mean, maybe I'm being fed. I think people know. Look up, look up. Uh, no, we're gonna look. We're gonna look it up right now. Okay. I love it. Learn something new every day. Yeah, I would like to learn something new. And mm -hmm. diarrhea, but you have a lot of energy. Yeah. You're shitting yourself, and you don't want to waste and the time with on the beautiful toilet. women. Yeah. <laughs> it just sounds. Speaking of which, Tim told us a story that was close to that. Why does cocaine make you poop? Oh, it does. It causes. I'd imagine it's a stimulant, kind of like coffee or cigarettes or whatever. That right, makes you but poop. on another level. Yeah. I bet you're right. Yeah. Oh my God, I didn't know that. So you think you, these are the parts of the Playboy Mansion parties that nobody talked about, right? <laughs> <laughs> No, Tim, Tim talked about the diarrhea. Tim, Tim did talk about yeah. that. He had to go clean up rooms afterwards. No, no, no. Yeah. I need this guy on my podcast so he bad. He talked about the rooms. This is the what our rooms audience with that, The rooms that were like splattered, splattered. <laughs> and no. the people in the rooms are well-known people that were just like... Uh, Yes, oh I'll get you a God. guest. He talked about it on ours. There's an episode on. I'm gonna on go look it up. The Tim Bagley. Minute I live here. It, I mean, the minute I leave here, I'm gonna listen to that on the way to. Surfing. Do you talk to fellow? Is that what you're talking to, fellow uh, Playboy? Uh, yeah, employees and. Well, we do a rewatch podcast, so we go back and rewatch our old reality show and talk about it, all the behind the scenes and things like that, how we feel about the edits, and we do interview people who are there, like other playmates or other girls or staff. But this guy sounds like he has the amazing story. I don't know if he's amazing stories. He was the cleanup guy. Funny stories in insider mm. info. Is it hard to relive some of those scenes that you have to watch back? Sometimes, yeah. I mean, for the most part, no. Like we have a pretty good sense of humor about it. But sometimes yeah. you'll see something that I forgot about and it'll like piss me off all over again and it'll be some unexpected thing. Are your parents alive? Yeah. How do they feel about all this? You know, they never really talked to me much about it. I think I was always kind of like their more wild kid. Like I didn't do anything crazy, but I think in their mind I was like the wild kid and they felt like as long as I was like not in a ditch somewhere, I was probably okay. <laughs> Just keeping you out of the ditch. They set the bar <laughs> exactly, pretty low. Exactly, <laughs> keeping me out of the ditch. And they didn't, you know, I didn't share with them any of the intimate details or anything like that. I remember one time my dad asked me if Hef actually lived at the house. So that's about what they knew. He didn't know that... He no. would, he, well, as a father, you don't want to think of your daughter. You don't want to know. You no. How, how, do you have siblings? I do. I have a younger sister. Right. I can imagine because I have two girls and a boy mm -hmm. and, and I can't imagine how I would cope. 
and I'm not judging or anything. Yeah. That's what my shirt says. <laughs> I'm, not I'm not judging, judging you. you. That's cute. <laughs> yes, uh, uh, and you can get those at howiemandel.com. Anyway, the, the uh, I'm not judging, but I, I would imagine as a father that would be a tough. It would be a tough road. Yeah, it's best to bury your head in the sand. I think because they're his friends. Did his friends ever? Did you ever talk to your? You know, like I always read and watched and loved Playboy. Yeah. So I, I just can't imagine if I saw my friend's daughter. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I think his generation, you know, grew up and they thought the brand was really cool and yeah. it was like the high end version of that thing. Yeah, absolutely. So, to an extent, it was okay, but. Then when like my issue comes out, everybody kind of turns and buries their head in the sand. I hope. <laughs> you hope. Yeah. You hope. Yeah. Um, you uh, right now, what do you want to do? I know that you're doing producing yeah. and hosting, and where do you see that you want to continue that, or do you have a? Absolutely, I want to continue doing the true crime programming. I love it because it's TV that I would actually watch. I grew up loving Unsolved Mysteries. That was my favorite show to catch when I was allowed to stay up late and watch it. And it, I love it. It's really rewarding to me to tell those stories. Jackie and my wife uh, spend the ad nauseum amount of time and watching those. I They're heard you on Morbid. Oh, I love Morbid. I am obsessed. They're so, so I was amazing. so excited when you were on. Thank you. Yeah, they've had me on twice. The first yeah. time we talked about like haunted amusement parks and the second time I discussed a case we covered on the Playboy Murders and I just love those girls. They're amazing. Didn't you date a guy that's a ghost hunter? I did, yeah. So what, what uh, do you, did you see anything? Yeah, yeah. A lot of hear, hear stuff, see stuff. Tell me, tell me a I ghost mean, story. I, I don't know if I have any really amazing stories. Like I, in my house, I would hear things or like doors would come unlocked by themselves. I live in a really old house in the Hollywood Hills and obviously was home a lot during quarantine. So w were you dating him at the time? Yeah, I'm not dating him anymore though. That's why I'm kind of like blanking out on the ghost stories. I'm like, Bleh. So <laughs> was the mansion haunted? I heard that the yes, mansion was also haunted. A hundred percent. Bridget had an experience in her room with two other girls who aren't necessarily like believers. Like one's a scaredy cat. One totally doesn't believe Bridget's totally into it. But they were there one night after she just got a new puppy and they all saw this woman with like scraggly black hair standing in the doorway to the bathroom. Everybody saw it at once and everybody right. freaked out, which that story is so compelling to me because you have three different people with three completely different viewpoints all saw the same thing. And it's like, what even is that? We, I've experienced that. You have, tell yeah. me. Not at the not at the mansion, mm -hmm. but uh, but at at Jackie, who who's that's who we're talking to right now. Jackie saw a man in her in her uh, closet, and when she was a little baby, and she described the man, and we just thought it was a dream. And then uh, the housekeeper later on said, "I saw a man in Jackie's room, I, the, oh the, the, like a man with a beard." And then. Uh, my, uh, I took her home as a little baby. She didn't even speak yet. And my, uh, mother-in-law had painted a painting of a man with a beard and we, she walked by and screamed. <gasps> and so like, th th these are, these could be coincidences. Yeah. I do believe in this stuff though. Yeah, me too. Yeah. It's so scary. And I think the scary is it part, scary or is it? Well, I'm not scared of ghosts themselves, but I'm scared when something weird happens in my house. And I think it's an intruder. Like if a door goes banging open out of nowhere and I'm like, how the hell did somebody get past the alarm? Or like, I hear a weird voice. But everybody has that fear yeah of intruders. it's a legit one so yeah. like that will I don't think mess anybody... me up for a whole day like the adrenaline just doesn't leave my body after i think i'm gonna have to fight for my life because somebody broke into my house why did you leave the ghostbuster um it just i mean I'm, I'm trying to like stay friends with him so i'm so let's not talk I, yeah. evil about him <laughs> yeah. he's he was the best guy in the world I yeah think. i'm just uh, trying to keep it good i yeah. always try to because keep he it was good. so great that i just couldn't take it you know anymore. why i couldn't handle it <laughs> because you care yeah. Exactly. <laughs> and, I love that. Answer. And you wanted to share him with others. Yeah. Because sharing is, is caring. caring. And you, you don't want to deny the world. Right. I only talk shit about people who talk shit about me first. I wasn't first. asking for shit. You're what? I only talk shit about people who talk shit about me first. <laughs> so balls in his court. <laughs> You're talking about his balls? <laughs> no. No. The, the theoretical ball. How court. old were you when you first met Hef? 21. And he was like in his 70s then, wasn't he? 80s you know 70s you're right 75 that's so freaky to me yeah I that's can, I can see how you think that yeah you can see how I think that 100 <laughs> percent that that when you were 21 mm -hmm. and he was in his 80s so he was in his 60s is that the same as the the and, and you weren't born yet no 
Like, can you imagine, like, like I'm in my 60s. I'm yeah. in my late 60s. Can you imagine that, that it's possible, and I, it won't be, but mm -hmm. that I could have sex with somebody who's not born yet? Yeah, I think as I got older, I start to see how messed up it is. And obviously at the time I knew it was weird and everybody else would think it was weird. You never thought it was weird? I mean, in some ways, yeah, but in a lot of ways, this was just somebody that I was just blown away by. Like I looked up to him because so he was much. a celebrity. I he was so amazing, exactly, and he'd accomplished so much. And I would go. I met him because I was invited to the parties, and I would, was invited to these pool parties they'd have on Sunday, which were pretty intimate. There weren't a lot of people, so you'd interact with him and his friends a little bit. And he just seemed like such an amazing, accomplished person, and such a gentleman, and was so smart. And he loved these old movies, and I loved coming to watch the old movies. So to me, he just seemed like such an outlier, and I. I was kind of like, I look back now and I'm like, was I kind of like in an asexual phase? Cause I wasn't, I was in college and I wasn't asexual. like, asexual. Yeah. Cause I wasn't like trying to, I wasn't like looking around at my school and being like, Oh, that guy's hot. I really want to date that guy. I wasn't really dating or into it. I was more just about school or what I was doing with my life or whatever. And then, you know, I meet this guy who I think is like so amazing and accomplished and all this. And he was just so impressive to me. At that point, what did your parents mm -hmm. say? Well, I didn't share with them until after I was already like moved in. At that point, what did your parents <laughs> say? You know, they didn't really say much. They didn't really ask any questions. And He's I much older than your parents, right? Absolutely. Yeah. But I didn't really sell it to them as a relationship right away. I'm just like, oh, I moved into the Playboy Mansion. I'm one of the girlfriends. And, you know, back then it's like he would talk about his girlfriends as if they were people he had sex with, but people didn't really know. People kind of thought maybe it was like a publicity stunt too. He didn't have sex with you? No, he did. But I'm just saying like that was the outward perception. Right away people. or did it, that take time? Did he? Well, before, I mean, it's always right away before he doesn't move anybody into the house as a girlfriend unless he's like had sex with them already. So that's the key. Yeah. So Looking back now, like, you know, I'm all for woman empowerment mm -hmm. and women making their own decisions and they have autonomy over their body. But looking back and seeing how maybe vulnerable someone is when they're younger and they might regret decisions that they make when they're older, do you think that you would go back? And like, do you think there should be some oversight, even in the world of reality television, and make sure that these girls or these women are in a place to be making these decisions that they're making that could be life altering. Yeah, I think so. I think society in general looks at it differently now. And, you know, definitely me as I'm older, I look at it and just as somebody in their forties, I'm like, Oh, how could you like target specifically like people in their early twenties or late teens? It just seems crazy to me. And now I see how manipulative it is. But at the time I didn't feel that way. Cause I thought I was a badass at 22 and I thought, you know, I'm so mature and I'm so, you know, I'm dating this really powerful person. You know, I thought I could handle the world and I couldn't. But there had to be a point, a switch that went off that mm -hmm. went, oh, this is not good. And I am stuck. Yeah, absolutely. How long into it? How long did you feel stuck before you left? Oh, for a long time. I mean, right away within the first couple of months, everything was like novel and exciting and fun. But then you get the bad side of it too. You get like, none of the girls get along in the house. Everybody's backstabbing each other. There's a lot of rules. There's a curfew. You're supposed to quit your job. And then you're like, okay, well, I'm getting a little bit of money for clothes. I'll try and save that. But then I can't really work. So it's not really like what you thought it was going to be. But then you feel kind of scared to go out into the world because you know everybody's going to judge you for making that decision and having been there in the first place. So I did feel afraid to leave for a long time. I felt like if I leave, I'm just going to go back to the situation I was in before. And I only moved in because I was like feeling desperate anyway. Why? You know? Because I was in college and I was trying to do too much at once and kind of failing at it all. I was auditioning. I was working. I was working to keep my grades up, to keep my scholarships and just kind of failing at all of it. And then my roommates I had at the time were moving away and moving out and moving back home. And I wasn't going to have a place to live. And I'd been going up to these Sunday pool parties and like talking to Hef and like the girls had like invited me to go out with them. And I always thought it looked like they had such a fun lifestyle, all the girlfriends, but I would have never had the balls to do it unless I was like desperate and like, oh shit, I'm not going to have a place to live in like two weeks. Maybe I should try this. Wow. Yeah. Is it like Stockholm syndrome? Like it, it you know what that is, right? It, yeah. yeah. Like, I think there was a little bit of that for sure. There were a lot of 
reasons I bonded with Hef, but I think part of it too was like you're looking at the big powerful person in that position who's making all the rules and you're starting to make excuses like, well, the only reason I'm miserable is because the other girls, the other girls are so mean. And yeah, there was a lot of like backstabbing and things like that, but you know, it wasn't until I was ready to actually leave that place that I realized who the problem was, you know, and who the- And you never craved uh, just a, a companion your own age, a, a, a male companion your own age? You never looked at people that came and visited the, the Playboy Mansion or somebody that you had met at a party and said- No, you know, not until the very end when I was ready to leave and I was- turning 30 by the time I was ready to leave. It was that long before I kind of woke up to like wanting somebody who was closer to my own age. Wow. Yeah, it's, it, it, it's interesting. And I think, you know, being on the spectrum maybe is part of that because sometimes when you're on the spectrum, you have a lot of trouble bonding with people or relating to people and connecting with people. And I had been, you know, for the first 22 years of my life feeling like I'm not really bonding with guys my own age. So when you meet somebody who's really charming and really knows how to make you feel special in some ways, you know, I was like, you know, well, you know, I'm kind of like a old soul. Maybe I'm meant to be with an older person, but I think I just didn't really understand myself. Is, uh, and the family, the Hef's family, are mm -hmm. they going after you a little bit or are they, they're okay with you talking about what your experiences were and um, some of them are definitely not okay. Some of them are, some of them have read my book and have, come on my podcast and have discussed things, not to say they agree with everything I say, but you know, some people are more open-minded. So it's kind of a mixed bag. What would you say? I, I think there's a resurgence now of Playboy. You know, there seems to be, I mean, at least in in fashion, yeah. you know, I see the, mm -hmm. the logo out in, in some of the stores and things like that. Uh, is this a good, you know, and I've talked to some young ladies who said, you know, this is, that would still be their dream. Yeah. Even now. And uh, wh what do you what do you say to somebody who's who thinks that? I mean, it's such a mixed bag. I like to share my story because I think people should see all sides of it. You know, what we portrayed on the reality show was kind of this like fantasy world that all these little girls were watching and thought was so cool. And that's why I think it's important for me to share my story and the parts that weren't great. So maybe people can learn from it if they're going through similar types of relationships or feel like they can see echoes of that and what they're going through. But also I was such a huge fan of the brand, you know, as a young woman, and I really wanted to be in the magazine. So I still appreciate the artistry of it. And I don't like completely hate the brand, if that makes sense. Yeah, It's such a mixed bag for me and I'm all about nuance and, you know, the gray areas and I think it should all be explored. You also had a very different experience than a lot of other playmates that were there to pose for the magazine as opposed to you living there and also you shooting the show. Yeah. So you had a very, you and the other girls had a very different experience than a lot of the other women. Absolutely. There was the whole other element of dealing with early reality TV and the production behind Did you that. get paid a lot for that? Absolutely not. In fact, we didn't get paid anything for the first season of shows they ordered. Wait a minute. That's horrible. Nothing? Zero. N zero. But they did Hef? Hef got paid for it, right? Oh, I'm absolutely. Sure. Yeah. I don't know what he got paid, but as a producer, he got paid for sure. Um, and then eventually- And they gave you zero? Zero at first. Eventually, we go, the second time they ordered a set of episodes, we got paid a little bit of money and each season- When you say a little bit, what was a little bit? Maybe like $1,000 an episode. For the whole- uh, An episode to start off with. And then each, and it was the highest rated show on E! at that time. So each season we would get a little bit of a raise. And I would say by the time we were done filming in season five, we were probably making what a character on a show like that should be making, but like not until the very last What's season. What's the most you made on that show? 25,000 an episode. But at the beginning, how could you, and you were okay with making nothing? Like you were, you didn't question it? Well, we lived there and at first I did not want to do the show. I had wanted to be like in the entertainment industry in some way, maybe like, like a TV host or something, but I didn't want to be like famous for my personal life, especially since it was a relationship that I was uncomfortable with in a lot of ways. So when they said we were filming a reality show, I was terrified. I ended up like I was put on antidepressants because of it, but I felt like I couldn't really say no because if I said no, it's like, okay, bye. You know, you're starting your life all over again, which I was already scared of doing. So I decided to just go into it with a good attitude and hope something good came out of it. And I think it was a good opportunity for us. I feel like it gave me a lot of confidence and finally gave me the confidence to leave. But yeah, I mean, it sucks that they just assumed they shouldn't pay us anything. 
And I would imagine when you're doing a show like that, there was no off time, right? There was always cameras in the house. and Pretty much, yeah. And, you know, when we were changing, they would cover all that. And we just assumed it would be blurred all the time because it was on E and they can't show that. But then And you took- would never say, please, just give me a minute. We would, after after we'd been filming for a while, we would. Or I would tell, like, if we had playmates in our room and they were changing into a bunny costume, I'd be like, okay, go in the bathroom. And then I got feedback from one of the producers that I shouldn't have done that because they wanted to get all the nudity possible. And I'm like, that's fucking gross. Like, they because, said that to you for E? I mean, I don't know if it was the producer from the production company or if it was coming from E. I don't know where it was actually coming from. But yeah, I got reprimanded for that. But it's messed up. Like, none of the playmates were getting paid for being on it for a minute either, you know? Like none of them were main cast members, but like they weren't getting anything out of it. So why should they be changing in front of the cameras, you know? Do you think some of the cattiness from the other women came because you three were chosen to be main cast members on the show? You know, the cattiness and the stuff we had to deal with was actually before the show. There was just a really toxic revolving door of like seven different women and everybody was so competitive. I think it was mostly about money and people felt like if they weren't getting enough money from Hef that that was somehow my fault because I was the one who was like, they call it the main girlfriend who would like share a room with him and stuff. Did you, you didn't have your own room? No. So no privacy ever. You had to, uh, that was your bedroom was his. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. It, it was, a, it was a lot. It was very overstimulating. <laughs> I should say. Wow. I didn't know that. It's, it's, yeah. it's almost scary to think that, do you feel, uh, you go to therapy obviously. Do you? Not right now, but I have off and on in my life. I'm a huge fan of therapy. Do you yeah. feel like you were traumatized? Do you feel like you've had trauma? Oh, a hundred percent. Yeah. A hundred percent. Wow. Yeah. I actually feel bad. I, don't, I didn't <laughs> realize it was like that. I mean, you're handling yourself wonderfully <laughs> and, and everything, but, and what a great, the fact that you're open about it, you know, this is um, really important for as, as, Jackie put it, you know, to empower, not just women, mm-hmm. to empower anybody yeah. when you feel like you're in an uncomfortable situation, you know, to uh, maybe uh, speak about it, you know, yeah, at least to a friend or, and, and the fact that you had to live so many years uncomfortably. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and I think that there, um, you know, the, the, the outside versus the inside, like when we watched the show and mm-hmm. everything, it looked like uh, to a lot of young ladies, I want, I want to be you. A hundred percent. So many people have told me that and they didn't know like what came with it. You and know? they're watching you in the midst of suffering thinking, oh, I, I want to do that. Yeah, and, and it's totally, kind of, but nobody knew the backstory. It's not even the backstory. It's the story. Mm-hmm. Yeah, totally. It's what it is. Mm-hmm. And uh, did you ever have, uh, what is, and you never thought, you, you never had a discussion, like you've never said, he was your boyfriend, so you never said, yeah. I'm I'm uncomfortable, or this is No, isn't- I, 100% I did. I hated having other girls in the bedroom. I talked about that all the time. He always made it sound like that was going to stop, and it did after a while, like the last three years of our relationship were monogamous, but he knew I hated that. But sometimes, you know, I would try and bring up certain things, like tell him there were certain things I was uncomfortable with, and he would be very manipulative about it. He would turn it into a big fight. He'd start fake crying. He'd tell me I'm going to give him a stroke for bringing up like the simplest thing. And, you know, for somebody as young as I was who just wants his approval. How do you know he's fake crying? Oh, you could tell. Like even the other, like Bridget and Kendra have talked about it too. Like it's obvious his fake cry. It, It was bad acting. It was bad. But then when he's doing it in front of you, you don't know what to do. It was bad. Like Who's what? better at fake crying, Tom Sandoval or Hugh Hefner? Hef. Like I don't. Th- I don't think I've any. I've, I don't think I've ever seen anybody try to put across fake crying that was as bad as this fake crying. What do you give me an example? How does it look? What does it kind of look like? Oh you should be able to do bad crying. What does it look like? I can't because people are going to take that clip and it's going to haunt me for the rest of my life. It's okay. I, no, it's not okay. And it gives me and it gives me something. That, it's clip bait. Just clickbait. give me. A, you just want a, clickbait? It's no, a, but it's a like, fake cry. Just give me a. Give me a, a little bit of uh, your impression. It's like crocodile tears, like 
looked at me just like, like fake tears or like no tears coming out. And you don't like, want you don't want me to have sex with four girls when in the same bed. A hundred percent. How could you exactly not like allow me? <laughs> this is a fantastic impression. It is. Yes. So I'm, I'm, I hope I'm not bringing up, like, I'm not giving you a flashback. <laughs> no, no. But can you imagine that? A what a way to that, that your girlfriend says, please, just me. Like, we don't just bring, please be what monogamous. Is, <laughs> what's the most women in one bed? Oh, my God. I don't even know. I mean, it was a large bed, like, probably the size of a California king, and there would be people, like, falling off of it sometimes. <laughs> Wait, so it'd be it a California really king. Yeah. This is like sit and sleep. Uh, so uh, <laughs> in a California king and everybody is naked? Yeah, or partially naked. And every, he's having sex with everybody? He's in his 80s. Yeah. How is that possible? A lot of Viagra, I suppose. Oh, wow. <laughs> and, 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 he's going, and then you're going, can we just be alone? Yeah. And he's going, I just... They're just friends. Oh, yes. Telling me he felt smothered and how could I do this? He felt and smothered when he was in the room alone with you. But nine women I falling know. off the bed is not smothering. <laughs> that is not smothering. I know. That's mothering. Because <laughs> he's a motherfucker. That's amazing. It's an amazing story. It's yeah, gaslighting. It a lot. Yeah. What? Gaslighting. Why is that gaslighting? Tell me. To put the blame on her when she starts to to tell him something that makes her feel uncomfortable and then to turn it around and say she's not being reasonable and not validating her feeling is, is called gaslighting. Do you like my hat? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I like your hat. Thank you. They're sponsoring this episode. Oh, good. Yeah. This is our sponsor for this episode, Melon. Yeah, And, and that's pronounced so it covers your melon. melon. That's why they probably, yeah. so I mean, uh, uh, they, it, they- And Andrea told me it's washable. My head. No. The hat. <laughs> yeah. Oh, melons changed the hat industry. They make the world's most premium headwear. Did you know that? Now I do. I'm telling you that. <laughs> I love it. I've been wearing the hats for uh, quite some time now, and the quality is unmatched, Holly. I love it. <laughs> unmatched. <laughs> you cannot match. <laughs> if you gave me, if you took away my, don't take away my melon. <laughs> I think I'm really crying. <laughs> you can't take it. My, fa uh, my favorite is currently the Hydro Odyssey. That's, that's what this is, the Hydro Odyssey. It's a more premium take on the classic trucker uh, shape. The Hydro Collection is perfect for the summertime. I'm wearing a perfect hat for the summertime. Huh? I love it. Yeah. All the hats are built for water with water repellent exterior and a buoyant visor core so that they float. These hats float. I love it. This is the most important part of the hat for me. <laughs> they have an anti- how do you say this? Microbial, mi microbial, microbial, an antimicrobial liner on the interior so sweat doesn't leave stains or an unwanted smell. They're so durable that I guarantee you they'll last five times longer than any other hat you've ever worn. You're looking to get, uh, if you're looking to get, if you want, you want one? Yeah, I'll take one. Okay. For I'm sure. going to give you one. Thank you. I'm going to give you one. But, uh, and this goes for anybody that's watching this or listening to this. If you're looking to get your first melon hat, Try it for yourself and use my code Howie30 at checkout for 30% off your first purchase. Just your first purchase. Howie30 for 30% off. That's melon, M E L I N dot com. And use the code Howie30 to get the 30% off. That Howie. was a. Eric what? is wearing his uh, melon hat right now. Are you, say, are you so, saying who's Eric? Just let you know. <laughs> Eric's wearing a melon hat right now. That's uh, Sunny talking to us from I the Black Cat. They have music. Do you like music? I do. What's your favorite kind of music? Probably like classic rock is what I listen to mostly. Who? who? Uh, I mean, like Nirvana is my favorite band, just like the stuff I grew up with in the 90s. Wow. It's Where crazy. are you from? I'm from, I grew up in Alaska until I was about 10, and then I moved to uh, the Portland area. Keeping it weird? Yes, yes. Do you keep it weird? Portland. I try to. Are you weird? I think I am. I like to think I am. But now you live here. I do. Well, I between here and Las Vegas, yeah. Do you are you still doing peep show? No, I love that show though. That was so much fun. Yeah. Did you like living in Vegas? I love Vegas more than anything. It's my favorite. It's the heat is bad for my, and the dryness is not good for my hair. Yeah, well right now it's crazy. We just had 120 degrees record breaking heat. That's amazing. How do you yeah. stay in shape? I, I just try to fit in working out whenever I can. Like I, I got one of those treadmill desks so I can like edit my podcast while I'm walking. That's so you, been like a game changer. <laughs> really? A treadmill yeah. desk? Do you do yoga? Yeah. I do. Yeah. And Pilates every now and then. Do you do? I, I started seeing uh, uh, 
uh, which we call it, uh, Jackie just gave me this video, this new workout for ladies. If you want to, if you're interested in seeing it, yeah, totally. Look at this. Do you think you can do this? There oh, we go. Are you doing like like when sometimes I do that with like resistance bands, like look at this squeezing thing. <laughs> Yeah, look at that. Oh, no, 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 <laughs> You no, do that no. with You do the resistance? <laughs> you know what? I wish I could do that. That would be the ultimate flex. Really? Yeah. How do you even do that? I, I can do that. It's kegels, uh, kegel exercises. No, that's like sucking. Yeah. You know what bothers me about this one? <laughs> you know what bothers me most about this? Uh, the second woman out why? of all of them. Why? Because uh, she's the spiller. She's the one that spills. Oh, Everybody no. Everybody else. I think so. Look, play it again from the top. There's so that's the, the first. first woman. Mm -hmm. Okay, the second woman is the only one with wipes. Look at, she's got the wipes. There's oh, no. wipes there. Why does she have wipes? Nobody else has wipes. It's because she stirs and sucks. How do you do that? That one has a baby there with her. Really? Oh, no. Yeah, crawling on the floor. How do you do that? How would you do that? How well, would that video isn't real, right? Like the straw's really going up and they're using their mouth and this should, we're just supposed to think it's their vag, right? No, no. it is their vag. Are we sure? Yeah, I do kegel exercises as much Wait, as I can. Wait, is that especially a possibility? It, I never even thought that was a possibility that it's going up into their mouth. How would it go into? No. Because it's out of frame. You can't see their mouth in the video, can you? What is you? you why are you with the conspiracy? You know all the, well, no, because <laughs> I've seen this video. I remember seeing this video and in the comments, people were like, no, they really have the straw like going up their shirt and into their mouth. And because What's the crossed. point of the exercise? To say like you're really tight. No, this is, uh, how tight can you be if you dropped a baby out to get a drink? <laughs> I don't know. No, I think it's, I think it's kegel video. exercises. I think it's muscle control. Are you going to say something, Kyle? Well, I paused on this one. You can see the straw is not going up her shirt. Oh. Yeah, not going up her shirt. Goodness. There you go. I do kegel exercises really? just leading into the summer. Now it's the summer. Okay. It's good for men too. People don't realize that. That's, <laughs> really? Why are you laughing? Is that real? Are you being serious? Yeah, I, I'm not going to show you, but I have okay. a six sack. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, just ripped. Thank you. <laughs> That's amazing. Thank you. Just for the summer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So th this girl uh, has other exercises. She has a, uh, there's an ab workout too. Can you do this? Look at her ab workout. Watch this. What yeah. is that? It would not look like that if I did that. Would it look like this? Here we go. Boom. Whoa. Boom. Boom. Yeah. Boom, boom, oh my boom, gosh. boom. What is that? I don't understand anything on this workout video. <laughs> Unique talents. It is great. This, this is my dad's algorithm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is your for you page? Oh so? my, I love it. Why, is it, is you should I be concerned? No, I mean, I, I get stuff like this too. So what's your algorithm? Mine? Mm -hmm. Yeah, what's the I weirdest thing you get? Um, I don't know about the weirdest thing. I get a lot of like astrology. I get a lot of gossip. I get a lot of, and then I get like this stuff. Do you get self-help stuff? Sometimes, yeah. Are you into self-help? Are you into- um, Absolutely. Are you into um, meditation? Yeah, I like to try and meditate. Usually oh, right before I go to sleep. Oh, mm -hmm. do we have a listener that helps our guests meditate. Really? You wanna try it? I don't think it'll be very um, interesting meditating, but I will give it a whirl. It's always interesting. Give it a whirl. This is, uh, try this. All right. Take a deep breath. Do not excel. Only me, I can. <laughs> Wait, you're laughing. <laughs> what? What? What you happened? You already ruined it. What happened? I'm laughing too hard. Okay, I'll try and hold it in. Okay. No, th just listen to him and, okay. and just, uh, okay, start it again. Take a deep breath. Do not excel. Only me, I can. <laughs> what happened? Hello. What happened? I'm high on life. Is there anybody in there? <laughs> well, you're there. You're <laughs> but wait, let's start it again. It's not working. She's got to get into the... Nobody can listen to him and not laugh. <laughs> it's just you have, to, you have to center yourself. I think you have to find your center, your balance, mm -hmm. and then center yourself. I think that's the way into this. Ready? Okay. Here we go. Go. Take a deep breath. Do not excel. Only me, I can. <laughs> It's not gonna work. Hello. It's not gonna work. <laughs> what else does he say in the video? I have a feeling I'm missing something. Well, I don't. I think he's missing something. <laughs> you want to see the, the the rest? Yeah, I do. Okay, start again. Take a deep breath. Do not excel. Only Ref. me, I can. Hello. Hello. Is there anybody in there? Hello? Well, you're there. 
You're there. You're still there. You're still there. Not breathing. You're not breathing. <laughs> You're holding your breath like a god. Like a god. You're the greatest. You're the greatest. Alive. Holly, you're the greatest. <laughs> you're slightly brain damaged, but it's... Okay. <laughs> I like it. Yeah, it's a happy ending. <laughs> yeah, it's fun. Isn't it? Yeah. I'll let you have that tape. You can take that home. And when you're in the, uh, when you're in there, a good space... Do it yeah. with your in kids. Your head, with the kids. It'll put me in a good mood, no matter it what. Will. It makes me laugh. Tapes do that. Yeah. I, I never know... Do you, uh, do you, are you concerned? <laughs> what are you laughing at, Jack? You never know what? You just never know. Yeah. What do you know? What do you know, Jack? Uh, I, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I, uh, have you ever, are, are you concerned in this day and age of uh, being canceled? No, I feel like I arrived on the scene canceled because when you're so <laughs> synonymous with Playboy, people think, oh, that's such a racy brand and a lot of people don't want anything to do with you because you're so synonymous with that brand. So I feel like I'm pre-canceled, which is a great relief. Like grandfathered in. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Grandfathered into cancellation. Yep. Oh, good. I, I'm, I'm, I'm fascinated by that subject because I, I don't know that I was canceled, but I got in trouble. I don't know if you know about that. I did a post on TikTok a couple of years ago. Oh, the prolapse? Yes. <laughs> what are your thoughts on I prolapse? I love that she knows that about what you. What are your thoughts on prolapse? I don't think that's a cancelable offense. I think it makes you quirky. Why am I quirky? <laughs> because it's just people think it's funny that you're this accomplished man and right. you're posting a picture of an anal prolapse. I think but I didn't know that it was that. Wait, I didn't know that part. It was an accidental post. He didn't know it was a pro. He didn't know what it was. I just saw it was during COVID yeah. and I just saw, there's the post up there. I just saw the, uh, I saw that picture and, and I thought it just looked like a wet cupcake brain on the back of somebody's pants. And I said, is this COVID related? Oh my God. And if it is, what should we do about it? This is my friend, Neil. I said that. It's classic. I think it's fantastic. It's classic? Yes. Did a prolapse ever happen? Oh, at the, the at the mansion. Not that I know of. No, I never saw. A prolapse. Are you familiar with uh, anal prolapsing? I think I know what it is. What like, is it? It's <laughs> like when something goes horribly wrong down there, and you kind of turn inside out, right? Well, you do turn inside out, and it's not. They don't show it. In, it's not in that movie now. That Disney movie is that what? It, inside oh. out. <laughs> is that what that is? Oh, is that what the Disney movie is? <laughs> I had no idea. Oh well, gosh. spoiler. <laughs> anyway, the, uh, uh, but you're saying it's things that go horribly wrong. So what happened is I've talked about this ad nauseum. I posted that thinking yes. it was a funny little <laughs> meme for yeah. COVID. Uh -huh. And then my son called me a couple of hours later and said, Dad, what have you done? And I oh asked gosh. what I had done. And then and, and it, it was trending uh, worldwide and I lost some sponsors. So it, You really lost sponsors? Yeah. And then Mm -hmm. Well, do you who, want me to name the people that want to walk away from me? Who pulled out because you accidentally how many pulled times, out? How many times <laughs> have you said prolapse. that? Who pulled out? Well, I, I mean, I luckily always know who's pulling out. But, <laughs> but who pulled out? Tell me. I'm so curious. Uh, why won't you say it? Everyone has said it and people have if even If they've gotten, already no. canceled you, why are you scared? Is I'm not saying order? anything. I'm just worried. I'm just, I'm what not are the categories? Why? Comfy I'm chairs. so curious. This is so <laughs> weird to me that you would be canceled for that. I wasn't canceled. I just, okay. I was, I got in trouble. So anyway, and then Ethan Klein, do you know the H3 mm -hmm. con uh, uh, contest podcast? Yeah. He schooled me on what it was. That's where I learned what a prolapse oh. was. And you're wrong. What is it? It's, it doesn't have to go horribly wrong. There are people that choose to do that. Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah. Like a for fetish. pleasure. Yeah. Yeah. Oh God. You didn't know that? <laughs> you know what? I've learned so much today. <laughs> you want to learn something more, young lady? Yes, I do. Wait, okay. you should ask her ahead of time if she wants to see it, not if she wants to learn, because we need consent here. Do you want? Oh to yeah, see we it? can't be like. Yeah. <laughs> but if you don't, if you don't watch the prolapse, I'm gonna be really upset. <laughs> Does that? No, I want to know. I want to know. Okay. okay, here we go. Look at the screen. <laughs> so this is your OG post. No. Whoa, he did my not. God, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Wait, you didn't post that though. You posted like a stiff. No. Okay, okay. And the audience can't see that. They only can see you seeing this. Tell well, them what you're looking at. I, uh, okay, I barely glanced and I had to look away. Still happening. It's disturbing. I know, but it's not a, something it horribly wrong. 
They're, I think that's going horribly wrong. But the, are, you don't no. think these are consenting adults doing this? Look at what this. What if they're not? What if they're being trafficked? Oh. They're, they're well, not, you why are you whining? Wah, wah, wah. Wah. <laughs> You're so negative. <laughs> that is a terrifying. Really? No, we talked to the guy who uh, does We talked this. to the guy who's on there. Oh my God, are you serious? Are you tearing do you up? Want, do you want him are on your podcast? Fake tears? Do you want him on your podcast? Do you want podcast? him on your podcast? I think his name's Hungry <laughs> Eight. No. What's his Hunger name? Hunger FF. Hunger oh FF. You guys, it's, the video is still playing. Oh my God. Oh man. <laughs> okay, do you want it off? Yeah, I'm not looking at it. You know what makes it easier? There's a, we have music with it. Really? Well, uh, Sonny wrote a song. I want to hear the song because I love your songs. Okay, Sonny, we'll play the video again. He needs the song because he sings okay, I'm along. Okay, I'm just going to listen to the song, though. I'm not liking it anymore. Well, you got it to understand the song. I, th I think I got the drift. <laughs> Sonny, we're going to run the tape and play the song. Motherfucking prolapse. Prolapse. <laughs> Prolapse. <laughs> Motherfucking prolapse. Prolapse. <laughs> Motherfucking prolapse. Prolapse. <laughs> Be stuck in my head all day. I love it. Can you imagine what's going to be stuck in their asses all day? Oh. I love that she thought the headphones were going to be overstimulating. Little did she know what she would be watching. Right? You seem to be too turned in. Too tuned in. Money pot, honey pot, friends till the end. We bend and we bend till our ends are bled. Our ends bled. Like a motherfucking balloon <laughs> Boys around Floating through town Oh, oh. Like a bumblebee Releasing his thing And let your ass out Touch it with your finger It's a foul hey, Till your butt oh breaks A rectal earthquake Upside down Come here <laughs> Rectal earthquake yep. Upside down cupcake yeah. See? Oh my god Now it makes it nice can I give a little plug prolapse. to Sunny, by the way? Yeah. The Prolapse song is now available on iTunes. Oh, I'm downloading. I'm downloading. Well, please download it. Are you on TikTok and all that? Yeah. You should make a dance to this. Yeah. We should make a dance. The music. Uh, oh. Oh. <laughs> oh, we're getting special effects. Yeah. I love it. Motherfucking Prolapse. <laughs> wow. This podcast. You know what? what? I'm gonna post. Song? I'm gonna find that song on TikTok if it's there, and I'm gonna. Make no, it's on. It's on Spotify right now. But you could. You, it's on TikTok too. Oh, it's on oh. TikTok too. Yeah, okay, I'll post a little teaser there. when you're about ready to drop this podcast. I'm gonna like, drop this, this podcast on. Uh, this is the, the, today. It's dropping uh, no. on, on the 16th. Okay. Today's the 16th. <laughs> <laughs> right. Can we ask like Charlie D'Amelio to make a dance or something to the prolapse song? Yeah, you call her mom. Yeah. Call her mom and say, <laughs> and say, Charlie, you want to, you may want to ask the girls to dance to uh, what she called a fucking problem. What? It just doesn't look like that's healthy, right? Like that can't be good for you. Oh, I thought you really. Could. I think it's good to, you know, air it out. I always say, don't yuck someone's yum. There was nothing. Yummy. I mean, no judgment. It just looked a little scary. Jarring. Really? Yeah. Well, you're, you sound you, a little judgy. Uh, apparently, <laughs> you're, you've been out of the dating scene a little yeah, too long, so. young lady. <laughs> yeah. Look, this is great for us because it's it's uh, this is a father daughter podcast. So these healthy are the kind, bonding. Yeah, I think I don't th know that we're bonding over the prolapse. <laughs> 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 Do you have any uh, any questions <laughs> for you? I, I really am curious what sponsors canceled over your, your prolapse picture. I feel like we... Well, not the not the lovely people at Melon. Yeah, Melon is amazing. <laughs> Maybe they didn't know about the prolapse. 30% off. What's in the fish tank? That's what I want to know. In here? Yeah. Look uh, at it. It's a it's a uh, fillet of fish. Oh, cute. You're right. That is what it is. It is. Sam made it. 
Sam. That's adorable. Sam from H3 Aww, made it. It's a, so it's a filet of fish. I love it. And these are these are extra hands, so I don't I don't touch anything. Oh my god, I, that's I the use, hand I can shake. Okay. Yes, that's the hand. And this is I use it just to move things around, pick up uh, various products that I love. Oh, <laughs> very cute. I'll just take a sip of that. I actually <laughs> finished this podcast. This is the, the, this podcast ended like five minutes ago, but. Why no, leave? keep rolling. It's okay. so good. No, this is like the most fun. This is the most fun. This is the most fun. This is a. Is this more fun than being on Morbid? Do you enjoy this podcast better? I think we solved well, the crime. Well, it's a completely, completely, completely different vibe. I have fun on the on both, but I this was so fun in like a laughing way. But I'm do in you, a very good mood. I'm but do you like so us much, more? Yeah. Do you enjoy us? Do you love us more? I can't pick favorites. <laughs> Well, but I like I like you just as much as the morbid girlies, so that's saying a lot because I love them. And and we love you. Thank you can you. come. You can come here anytime. What are, what are we plugging right now? What do we want to plug like right now? Is is oh, lethally right blonde on yes. there? Yes, lethally blonde and the Playboy Murders are streaming on Max, so you can watch those anytime. I'm really proud of those shows. What season so. are you in? Well, we just finished um, season one of Lethally Blonde and season two of Playboy Murders, and we're getting ready to go into more. So it's very exciting. how many murders were there at the mansion? It wasn't murders at the mansion. It's mm. murders that um, happened with people who were just involved in the Playboy world in some way. And Playboy was such a big business. You know, there were Playboy clubs all around the world. And there were so many women who worked as bunnies and women who posed. And all those people, obviously, are real people with full lives. So you're going to find quite a few interesting stories. Um, and then, uh, so that you've got those two shows. Mm -hmm. uh, you're, you have a book, but it's been out for a while. Yeah, Down the Rabbit Hole and the Vegas Diaries are always available on Amazon. And hollymadison.com? Uh, Do you have yeah. a thing? Do you sell merch? I don't, actually. It's just kind of like an informational website that's just been sitting there for the past eight years. But I have my podcast, Girls Next Level, that drops every Monday. Every Monday, wherever yeah. you get your podcast? Wherever you get your podcast. Is it on YouTube also? Yeah, we do put our videos on YouTube. We, do you do like us? Like, if you subscribe to this podcast, like, you know that this subscribe button? Mm -hmm. yeah, ours is Scratch and Sniff. I love that. Yeah. I need to get that technology. You this, do. You do. <laughs> people will subscribe. Well, go ahead. This week, it smells like the heads of people that don't wear melon hats. Oh, right. The I smells that the smells yes. that you don't want, not yeah. the not the gorgeous smells inside <laughs> yeah. the melon hats. Yeah. So we took those, bottled them up, put them in the subscribe button, so you can see when you subscribe what that smells like, and then if you don't want to smell like that, you buy a melon. No prolapse smell. Oh, I wonder what that smells. I think that's dependent don't, on the person. Don't wonder. Why did that's you bring that up? <laughs> Sorry. Do you have a I bet you it's fresh. Also, uh, <laughs> what? I bet you it doesn't smell. They look clean. Oh, that really looks like when I look at that mm. picture, I go, oh, that's got to be fresh. That's I want to get one of those <laughs> hanging from my rear view mirror as an air oh freshener for the car. Can you that would be that? great. That Can would you make be a, a great stuffy, like a stuffy pro. Oh, we should do that merch. as a merch for your car. You just hang this big pink wet thing. Upside down cupcake. It's an upside down cupcake. Yeah. You hang that as a car air freshener. Genius. You inspire. You, you inspire, yeah, Holly. You. <laughs> because of you, we're going. Nobody places. called you Ashley because of Ashley Madison. I kept saying Ashley Madison instead of Holly Madison. You're alone, Dad. Yeah, nobody's <laughs> ever called me that. No. You know about that website, right? I do. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Why? Are, why is that stuck in your head, Dad? Why do you know so much about that website? <laughs> I'm not supposed to say. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> your mother said I can't talk about it anymore. <laughs> right. I've, I've been married to her mother for over 40 years now. That's amazing. It is that. amazing. Yeah. How lucky is she? Totally. <laughs> right? Yeah. Right? All you guys I are mean, lucky, yeah. Yeah. But, <laughs> come on. Golden prize. <laughs> <laughs> this is, a, it's an awkward ending to a podcast, isn't it? Like, usually people just sign off or they yeah. end it. But this is. I know how we can end it one more time. What's the name of the guy I need to have on my podcast who is a butler? Oh, Tim Bagley. Tim Bagley. Tim Bagley. Okay. Tim Tim Bagley. Bagley. One okay, of the funniest guys ever. He was in. He's in every movie. He was on. Nice. You should call Will him Grace. right now and ask if he'll go on. You want me to call him? If you want, I feel bad putting people on the spot. Nah, he doesn't no, mind. It doesn't matter. <laughs> and we can edit. Yeah, we can edit. I'm going to call him. <laughs> I'm going to call him right now. I'm going to get you a guest for your podcast on my podcast. I would love that. Our okay. podcast is very specific. So anytime we find a good guest, What are you talking it. about? Well, it's, since it's a rewatch podcast, we talk about Girls Next Door and just anything like mansion related. 
Okay. I'm going to uh, let me see if he answers. Let's see if he answers. Here we go. I'm going to dial his number. Let's see if he answers. This is exciting. Yeah. <laughs> this is an actual butler from the Playboy Mansion. And so much more. He's an accomplished actor, too. You know who his best friend is? Is Jennifer Coolidge. How he cute. Goes, he always goes, when you see her, he's Aww. sitting with her at the Grammy or the Emmys. He's not going to answer you because you have a block number. Well, I'm a celebrity. <laughs> yeah, but you have a block. I'm a major celebrity. <laughs> no one answers block numbers anymore. Leave a message for Tim. See? Oh, Holly wants you on her. At the tone, please oh. record your message. <laughs> when you finish recording, you may hang up or press one for more options. Tim, it's Howie Mandel. I'm calling you from my podcast. I have Holly Madison on my podcast, and she wants you on her podcast to tell some of the stories that you told us on my podcast mm -hmm. about the Playboy Mansion on her podcast. Yeah, we'll do Zoom or whatever's convenient for you. We'll do Zoom. And she doesn't even want you in the room. <laughs> no, I'm just trying to make <laughs> because it Because you were in charge of the Pepto-Bismol. <laughs> Talk to you later. Thank you. I'm going to I'm going to reach out to him somewhere and hit him up. So thank you. Oh, I'm going to send thank him you for your setting the stage. I did. I set thank the stage. You. I appreciate you, that. You're a wonderful person. Thank you. And I, I wish so you, fun on here. So you and 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 I wish you nothing but success. Thank you. And uh, I thank you for um, uh, speaking out like you do about you. autism and neurodiversity and just removing the stigma from being able to talk about things. And I would imagine that when you tell stories and people hear from you, you help a lot of people out there. I hope so. Thank you so much. That means a lot. It, it, it means a Thank lot to, to a lot of people. Anyway, that's, uh, that's Holly Madison. Do you have an extra song? Uh, outro, I think. Is it an extra or an outro? Outro. outro. Intro? Outro. Extra. Well, extra, it means it's like one that I'm not paying for and he's giving me an extra one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Listen to this. This is our goodbye song. Okay. I think. <laughs> Here we can come listen to them in person. Take our okay. This is a man's womb. This is a man's womb. Is over the road, yes. Mine made the train choo choo <laughs> to carry the heavy load, yes. I said, Mine made electric lights <laughs> to take us out of the dark, yes. Mine made a boat for the water, yes. Like no one made the ark, yes. Oh, this is a man's 